The Sega CD is primarily remembered as another one of Sega's big failures, but it's also remembered as a console add-on that nobody remembers. So anyways, let's just talk about all of the co-op games from worst to best. Right off the bat, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. All the sports games are the worst. I'm, I'm just not gonna talk about the sports games. Skip those. NBA Jam's on here, that's good. Yeah, it's everywhere. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Unfortunately, this is not the same arcade classic. It was made by Capcom. It's not a beat em up. This is an on rail shooter where one player controls the Cadillac and another player controls and shoots the guns. The graphics are both completely terrible and uninteresting and just do a really great job of making your eyes bleed. This is actually one of the worst co-op games I've ever played. It is so bad that we talked about it in our worst co-op games of all time video. Somehow Elon Musk had something to do with this game as well. He was one of the designers or something. Twitter wasn't his first failure when it came to the tech world, apparently. I have nothing good to say about this game. The backgrounds are like an FMV and you just constantly crash into obstacles and dinosaurs. Everything looks the same. This game sucks. Sega Classics Arcade Collection. It, it's a collection of Sega Genesis games. It has Golden Axe, Streets of Rage, Columns, Revenge of Shinobi, and Super Monaco GP. Golden Axe and Streets of Rage are some of the all-time classic co-op games that came out on the Genesis. You'd think that they would be the same here. But guess what? Golden Axe, for some reason, does not include co-op. That makes no sense. So, I'm, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know why. But Streets of Rage has co-op intact, and yeah, this is another great version of Streets of Rage. I don't have much else to say about it. Y you've all played Streets of Rage. BC Racers is a kart racer that's set in the prehistoric era, featuring characters from the Chuck Rock series. You remember that series? Yeah, neither do I. There's numerous ports of this game. Most of them have a split screen competitive option, but what sets the Sega CD version apart is that you can actually play it in co-op, where one player controls the driver while the other controls the fighting, steering, and turbo. This, I think, works surprisingly well as a co-op game, and it ends up playing kind of like Road Rash mixed with Mario Kart. It's not the best kart racer around, but it's definitely worth trying out. Three Ninjas Kick Back is a 2D action platformer based off of the Three Ninjas movies. This was also released on the Genesis and Super Nintendo, but the Sega CD version has a few extra bonus stages as well as CD quality music. This is actually a pretty decent platformer. You can jump and climb, you can pick up weapons, there's a little bit of exploration, you gotta go back and forth. It's not the best game, but I enjoyed playing this with a friend. I'm going to talk about Lethal Enforcers 1 and 2. Both of these can be played in two-player co-op, and they're best played with light guns. In the early 90s, we saw a lot of games trying to capitalize on the digitized graphics that Mortal Kombat brought to us. And most of those games don't hold up. They look terrible. They end up creating just a very stiff control and limited frames of animation. Visually, I would say this fits right into that description, both of these games. But for some reason, it actually kind of works here. I think both these games are really solid. They're really fun to play co-op. I'm not sure which one's better, but again, these are games that were found on pretty much every console of the time. And the Sega CD versions don't really add anything new. So if you're looking for unique experiences, the Lethal Enforcer games aren't exactly it, but they're still fun to play. Ninja Warriors is a Sega CD game that was exclusively released in Japan. So it's actually a mega CD game, I guess. This is a port of the arcade game. There's also a version on Super Nintendo, but it's a totally different experience. This version is a lot closer to the arcade version, although it doesn't have the, the double monitor view like the arcade version. You can't really do that at a home conversion, but it does have the two player co-op gameplay intact. Ninja Warriors is a little bit weird. It moves pretty slowly. It's not necessarily a platformer and it's not necessarily a beat-em-up. I guess the closest game I could think of would be like Shinobi, but it moves much slower. That being said, I still really enjoy this game and I'm glad that it has the two-player option, unlike the Super Nintendo version. But if you're gonna play Ninja Warriors, the best version is actually gonna be 
the remake that came out, Ninja Warriors Returns, or whatever the hell it's called. And that is a remake of the Super Nintendo version, but it has co-op and updated visuals. But that's a completely different game, and it's hardly related to this. But anyways, this version is pretty good. Soul Star is one of my favorite co-op games on the Sega CD, and it's an exclusive game. So if you're looking for something that can only be played on the Sega CD, this is definitely one of those games. It plays kind of like Star Fox, where one player is able to fly around and shoot, and the second player controls an extra cursor to double the firepower. I love the graphics here. I actually think they hold up much better than Star Fox. Instead of going for the primitive polygonal art style, they stuck with sprite-based graphics. And I just think that those are timeless. They always look good. The soundtrack here is incredible. This fully utilizes the CD capabilities here. This sounds like a film soundtrack. This could be in a Star Wars movie or something. This is actually one of my favorite on-rail shooters ever. It's a really great game. So if you're looking for co-op games on Sega CD, Soulstar is definitely one of the best options. There's a version of Dungeon Explorer that came out on the Sega CD, and it's also an exclusive game for the system. Dungeon Explorer originally came out on the Turbo Graphics, and there was a sequel, Dungeon Explorer 2, as well as a version that came out on the Super Famicom called Crystal Beans. This isn't too different from any of those games. It's a top-down dungeon crawler, similar to Gauntlet, where you can pick multiple classes. You have monks and ninjas and other characters as well. Any kind of RPG that can be played co-op is always a good time. However, this game does require a lot of grinding if you want to get anywhere. So you'll end up just going into an area where enemies are constantly gathering towards you and you can just hold in the button and continue to shoot until you gain a couple levels. Once you do that, you're going to have higher HP, you'll get stronger, and you're going to want to gather up gold so that you can buy upgrades. So that part can be a little bit tedious. And honestly, you're going to start grinding the moment you boot this game up. So just get that out of the way, then you can actually go further and enjoy this experience. I don't know, this might just be my favorite Dungeon Explorer game in the series. But in my opinion, the best co-op game on the Sega CD is Final Fight. Of course, Final Fight was ported to just about every system, but they all had compromises. The one that most people know about was the Super Nintendo version. And it's not bad, but beat-em-ups are meant to be played in co-op. And it's just unforgivable that they made a version of Final Fight that could only be played single player. This version keeps all of the arcade gameplay intact, including the two-player co-op option. It also has a really great CD quality soundtrack. When it comes to home console ports of Final Fight, this is by far the best version of the time. It's really the next best thing to the arcade version. In general, I'm more of a Streets of Rage fan, but I do love Final Fight as well. It's just a really important game in the history of beat-em-ups. Okay, so those are all the co-op Sega CD games. If there's anything I missed, let me know. I intentionally left out all the sports games and wrestling games. I just don't give a shit about those. But if you enjoyed this video, hey, check out our video about all of the co-op Sega 32X games. And thank you for watching.